video 3 in this series of online support tutorials produced by ESCOM Expo for Young Scientists. In video 1, we looked at the different types of projects, and in video 2, we helped you identify and resolve potential ethics violations you may encounter when planning and conducting your research. In this video, we're going to learn about variables. Specifically, we will help you to identify variables in scientific investigation type experiments. So, let's recap. In our first series of videos, we helped you write a research plan. We took you from idea to a hypothesis in five easy steps. The next step involves identifying your variables. At first, you started with a topic and the problem you wanted to solve. You then narrowed down your focus to the aim, the research question, and the hypothesis. Think of this as traveling through a funnel, going from broad and general to narrow and specific. So you may ask how are the aim, research question, hypothesis, and variable linked to your research. The aim is a broad statement of what you hope to achieve at the end of your research. Your aim should be smart, specific, be clear and precise about what you want to do, measurable. Can you produce evidence or results to show that you have reached your goal? Achievable. Can you do this research? Realistic. Are you being realistic? Do you have the necessary resources such as time and money and skills to do this research? Time frames. How long will each stage of your research take? Now that you've started your aim, you need to write down your research question. The research question helps you to narrow down and focus your research. When you answer your research question, you should be achieving your aim. Let us write down your research question. You can have more than one research question, but having one will be less complicated for you. Research questions usually start with what or how. These can be followed by a why type of research question. You must remember that your research question must not have a yes or no answer. Then you can now start your hypothesis. A hypothesis is a prediction or guess regarding the outcome of your experiment. Your hypothesis must be precise, testable, and must also include the variables. In fact, your hypothesis is usually a prediction of how your variables will affect each other. Finally, we get to the variables. What is a variable? A variable is a quantity or factor that can be measured or observed and can be changed or manipulated. Did you notice that the different sections are not linked by arrows? Well, that's because the research process is not linear. For example, when you start formulating your aim, you may realize that the research cannot be completed within the required time frames. In that case, you will have to go back and change your topic. As previously mentioned, a variable is any factor that can be controlled, changed, or measured in an experiment. In our experiments, we are often exploring relationships between quantities or factors. We want to see how one variable, which is the cause, affects another variable, which is the effect. Because we can manipulate the variables to create a cause and effect, we can make a prediction about the result of our experiment. This prediction is actually called a hypothesis. Remember, Variables are central to scientific investigation because they determine the direction and outcome of the research. You will need to think about your variables throughout your research and mention them in all sections of your project report and poster. Think of your variables as the golden thread running throughout your research, guiding you and keeping you focused. There are three types of variables. Firstly, the independent variable. It is a factor or quantity that will affect or change the dependent variable. The independent variable stands alone because it is not influenced 
or altered by anything else in the experiment. Scientists manipulate the independent variable during an experiment to see how another factor or quantity will be affected. It is preferred to change just one independent variable at a time, so it will be easier to see the resulting changes. Secondly, the effect cause is called the dependent variable. This measured effect is called dependent because it depends on the independent variable. If there is a direct link between the independent and dependent variables, then you may be uncovering a cause and effect relationship. There can be several dependent variables in an experiment because the independent variable can cause more than one effect. Thirdly, a controlled or fixed variable is a factor that does not receive any experimental treatment. In other words, this variable stays the same throughout the experiment. Because this variable is not changed, we are able to better understand the relationship between the other variables being tested. Let's quickly do an example that shows the relationship between the aim, research question, variables, and hypothesis. You may be interested in sound frequencies and you want to determine how it affects the growth of plants. The aim of this research is to determine how sound frequencies affect the growth of radish seedlings. So your research question can be, how does the sound frequency affect the length of radish seedling stems? Your hypothesis can be, the higher the sound frequency, the longer the stems of the radish seedlings. Your independent variable can be, the sound frequency ranging from 200 to 1000 Hz. Your dependent variable can be, the amount by which radish seedling stems grow in centimeters. So your controlled or fixed variables can be time, conditions, that is the amount and type of soil, the amount of water and nutrients, the amount of sunlight, position of the plants relative to the sunlight, source of the sound, and so forth. Did you notice that I mentioned the units of measurements for my variables? This is very important. Here is another example showing the relationship between the aim, research question, variables, and hypothesis for an experiment that looks at the foraging preferences of honeybees from January to March. Remember, variables form an important part of all sections of your research. One such section is the method section, and that is because the quantitative aspects of your study are all related to your identified variables. These quantitative aspects are your masses, volumes, incubation times, and concentrations in lab experiments. For example, looking at the previous scenario with the honeybee experiment, possible control variables for the scenario were that the same nine selected hives were utilized for pollen trapping and sampling during the time when the project was conducted. And all the pollen traps placed on hives were identical. After you're done conducting your experiment, your variables must also be represented in the results section. Results should be presented so that it aligns with the variables stated in the research question, hypothesis, and method. The testing of variables or hypotheses are most applicable to scientific investigations and math or theoretical projects. Studies where there is no cause or effect relationship often do not have variables. These are projects such as engineering projects. Engineering projects instead have the engineering or design goals and design criteria. Another type of study that often do not have variables are social science studies. In your results section, you will have to present the data using tables and graphs. Here's a fun way to help you remember how to represent your results using variables. 
in a dry mix experiment, the dependent variable is the variable that changes by manipulating the independent variable. The dependent variable is represented on the y-axis. The independent variable is the variable that is manipulated and changed by the scientist. The independent variable is represented on the x-axis. To summarize, variables appear in the research question, hypothesis, method, results, and conclusion of your research as the golden thread running throughout your research, guiding you and keeping you focused.